So you guys know, if you've been subscribed for a while and you care about these reviews, um, my re-uploading the episode 2 review twice, no, three times, um, was it four? But anyways, uh, re-uploading it several times was not my intention to do. Um, he, uh, basically, Hasbro, the people over at Hasbro really don't understand, I guess, fair use, because I literally explained, um, that those reviews count as fair use, uh, under United States law, and I even provided links to what fair, to explain to them what fair use is. They completely ignored what I was saying in the counterclaims, and thus I had to re-upload the, um, the review. If it doesn't trip YouTube's automatic detection system, it's probably fair use, in my, in all honesty. Not always, but... It's a most likely safe bet, especially when people are using stills in a collage format and not an actual uh, clip. Okay, it's just what I want to say. And I think my channel's probably been marked as watch, but we'll see. If I have to re-upload this up this review th several times, we'll see what happens. And I changed the I'm gonna change the picturing format for the Power Rangers reviews most likely, at least for the newer episodes that as they air, um, just so that I don't believe Hasbro claims the videos that are pretty much mostly, um, people in front of camera talking, like Dawson Ryder and, uh, Ranger Review and all that, um, so we'll see, um, what's going to happen if I have to re-upload the, these two, or the last review and this one again, with different visuals of just maybe my South Park avatar or whatever else. Uh, that's the reason why. So, yeah. So, sorry for that two-minute PSA. I'm just gonna get on with the review. Alright, so episode three of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, End of the Road, and, uh, my god. <laughs> now, this episode and the plot is fairly standard for Power Rangers. It's the resident uh, environmentalism episode, and there is always, there has always been environmentalism spr or, uh, sprinkled through pretty much every Power Rangers season. The worst I think it ever got was, uh, Power Rangers Wild Force, where, um, not necessarily that the season was about environmentalism, uh, although that was apparently a big theme of it, or at least that's what they tried to play up as a big theme of it, but it got so bad that you had Animus who is a well-intentioned extremist, but comes off as a environmental terrorist, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, because he tests the rangers, he is so short with them that he literally takes away their wild zords and leaves them pretty much defenseless to take down orgs if they grow big. And, uh, yeah, wild force in terms of the second half, I don't think is quite that good, at least in terms of the Animus plot. A lot of other things in the second half are actually pretty good, though. Like, I like the team-ups and everything. I, I still like Wild Force as a season, but it has its faults, and it's unfortunately exacerbated by the fact that it was adapted straight from Gal Ranger rather than trying to fix those plot holes or those stupidity you know, stupidity things that were laying through Gal Ranger. But, uh, yeah, so basically the main plot of this episode, it's pretty simple once you get down to it. Um... You have uh, Zoe um, having Nate invent these uh, Morph X bikes, which run on Morph X energy, which are supposed to, I guess, help the bikes be able to pedal um, to a, to a very fast speed. I'm assuming at the same rate as cars, or even faster. They tried to show it off in one of the scenes where they. Um, are racing through uh, a back street with um, Blaze on another bike. Um, but I don't really think that they showed it off too well. They didn't show it off a lot, at the very least. Um, and the way it was shot, it's clear that the cars were going slower than the bikes. But at the very least, it was kind of there. Um, another, a different kind of written episode would have uh, included a scene, um, or maybe a better written version of this episode, would have had a scene, although maybe they 
don't have it in there because of um because of timing reasons but and it would have had a scene where they show it going faster than a bike because we don't really get a sense of what the Morphex really does outside of that short one, um, which they do. I guess they do technically have, but it's short and it doesn't really get the point across that much. Um, so we just have to assume that these bikes are supposed to go faster than regular traffic or regular cars or whatever else. Um, so yeah, so... The mayor is going to t uh, tear down part of a park to put in a new road because traffic around the city is um, apparently not really that good, which I don't really think we got a good sense of that either because we didn't really get a lot of like overhead shots or shots of uh, tertiary act and secondary actors in traffic complaining about how bad traffic could be on the main roads and everything. I think we could have gotten a few things of that as well. Like, it could have been just quick, like 10, 20 seconds of um, traffic, really heavy traffic, and people complaining, and then traffic basically stopping, and then people maybe getting out of their cars to start to complain. Um, and then having it reported on the news, which they have a newscaster who's apparently Zoe's mom. Uh, it's a really weird way to introduce um, this character into this show. It's not necessarily bad, but it's not really that standard. And so yeah, we just basically see her as the local new or local field reporter for the news, and um, and uh, then we get kind of a slightly awkward sort of way to say that she's Zoe's mom. I believe Zoe calls her mom. And she's shown worrying over Zoe when she's there uh, at the uh, dig site. But, yeah, it's really weird. And also, this episode has really no sense of time progression. Because this episode takes place over the span of a week. And yet, it doesn't really show the days changing much. And it doesn't feel like a lot of time has passed within the episode. Because the, ep the episode starts one day and ends seven days later, so we don't really get a sense of time progression with that. Um, it's literally just an uh, established problem. Here's how the Rangers attempt to solve the problem. Here's how the problem actually gets solved. And then here's the resolution of that plot. Um, which, the way it, um, it was solved is pretty standard for these kind of shows, because... The civilians see the rangers on the bikes, and then a lot of the civilians tend to want to um, ride on the bikes afterwards as well. Uh, so that's basically how I would have expected this to go down. Um, but we also don't get any shots of the civilians in the city starting to ride the bikes. We get the rangers trying to get people to ride the bikes, which there's a really weird scene of this guy who is this stereotypical cool dude who um, says, oh, I know what cool is. And that's not cool when talking about the regular single-person bikes. And then he sees um, Ben and Betty riding on a two-person bike um, that they had just put together. And he says, now that's cool. I th I would think that it would be the other way around, honestly, if anything. And I don't really see why, if he thought that the Morphex bikes in single-person fo uh, riding form wouldn't have been cool, but then he sees the dual-person bikes and thinks that they are. It maybe would have been better if he had a girlfriend or someone with him who... Uh, also said that the bikes weren't cool, but then, um, and a girlfriend would work perfectly for this, then, uh, then she would say it's not cool as well, and then they see the dual bike, and, um, then they're just like, ah, cool, we can both ride them at once, you know, kind of like that, it would still be kind of stupid, but at the very least, I would understand it a little bit better, um, but yeah, so, we have um the rest of this episode where um after the rangers trail after blaze and uh <laughs> uh yeah um a pun unintended uh they uh 
he then tries to morph to fight them, but then or he's or he's letting them chase him because he tried to do that. So he goes over to where Roxy is. He can't morph because he run he ran out of Morph X energy. Apparently his evil morpher runs on it. So does Roxy's, I guess. So they go over to where Roxy is, um, and uh, they start to fight her. But then um, there's an evil, they call him a Gigatron, I believe, in this, uh, for the evil uh, giant robot versions of the uh, monsters and everything. So then um, we have Ravi getting in his uh, Zord to go deal with him, and then uh, uh, Devin and Zoe still take her on uh, for a bit. Devin gets, they both get a bit... Uh, beaten by her, uh, but then uh, Ravi's a bit in trouble because he needs help dealing with the uh, Gigatron. So Devin goes off and gets in his Lord and help and starts to help him. And then uh, Zoe still deals with uh, Roxy for a few more minutes, and Roxy tries to shoot at her, but then uh, she says she misses, but she actually didn't. She hit the Morphex tank on her bike. Then Roxy takes the, the Morphex from the bike as it's charging up to explode and then throws it past Roxy. She says that she missed, and then Zoe says, no, I didn't. And it blows up a... They're in a warehouse, by the way, and it blows up a, a tank of, I'm assuming, Morphex, but I don't really know. And as well as they put gas canisters um, next to the barrel, like right next to the barrel. Um, and, um, the thing about this is they actually legitimately showed that in this episode, and I am very, very surprised that they did. Um, so, yeah, it's honestly really, really odd that they did that. Um, yeah, um, but the gas canisters were colored white, I believe, so I guess it's fine? I don't know, uh, but yeah, so then, uh, Roxy gets, um, uh, blown away from behind by the mini explosion that goes on behind her, and, uh, is a bit weak, but then, uh, they, I believe, uh, she gets up, and Zoe says, I guess we're both pretty strong, and Roxy's just like, I guess so, and then uses her key and morpher to, um, transport away, so then, uh, Zoe just lies there a bit, um, uh, weakened and says that she needs a carrot and then um we have um we have Devin and Ravi taking care of the Gigatron and everything and yeah um then we see them at the dig site uh, I guess at the end of the week that the mayor gave them and uh the construction workers are gearing up to start work as soon as the mayor says and then um, the mayor gets there and tells them that everybody is riding on their on the bikes and everything, and uh, and yeah, uh, so he declares that they're going to order five thousand more bikes to be made for the citizens around the town who want to ride them and everything. So yeah, um, and yeah, we get a. Slapstick bit of comedy with Ben and Betty where their bike separates when they modded it to also work as uni or yeah, unicycles, but unfortunately they don't know how to ride unicycles, so they go, or so they ride off. Um, so yeah. So a uh, shorter description of the episode because the episode's really simpler than the first two for the most part, and there's less going on for the majority of it, um, as well as the fact that I think my entire description of it would would have been five to eight minutes, but I spent. Uh, some more time talking about some of the things I noticed in the filmmaking of this and the script writing of it that I think could have used some improvements. Um, there's also some weird things that are in here, like when the Rangers are talking to, uh, I believe, Nate, um, about uh, when he tells them that uh, Robbie needs help, uh, they put their hands to their helmets, establishing that they have some sort of communication devices in their helmets. But then, within the same scene, a few minutes later, we see Zoe talking into her morpher to use as a communicator. Um, I don't know 
why they thought to use the uh, helmet communicators as a thing when they used their morphers as well. Um, it seemed like that was a really weird uh, thing to put in. I don't know if it's necessarily a mistake because other ranger seasons have had the rangers established by holding their hands to their helmets that they have communicators within their helmets so they don't have to use the regular morphers but it's that's mostly for the seasons that don't have wrist mounted morphers this season has wrist mounted morphers um and it's really odd that they just didn't have the the, uh, the suit actors hold their uh, other hands up to their helmets and talk into them i don't really know why they did that honestly and then um uh yeah so like i said this episode is really no sense of time progression because it's established one day that they have this thing to do then the next day i'm assuming they've made enough bikes for people to try out and then we're to assume that the rest of the week was spent um doing that unless if what was supposed to happen is that um, since that happens all on the same day, um, I guess we're supposed to assume that five more days went by, um, after the next day with, uh, people riding the bikes more, which if that was the case, I would have wanted to see, uh, this, this again is not helped by the fact that there are no shots of traffic and or people riding the bikes, because that certainly would have helped with the time progression a bit and seeing people slowly adopt these bikes as a way of transport when uh, they don't actually need their cars. Um, so, yeah, so this episode I think is okay. It's certainly not bad. Um, and it certainly makes sense for it to be in Power Rangers because we've had similar episodes in the past, but I think this episode is a little undercooked on the filmmaking side of it. Because if you really want to establish and just have a through line through and an understanding for the audience to have all this stuff, like the time progression and the progression at which people are using the bikes and all that, you need to, you need to have establishing shots and at least 10 to 20 seconds each of what I was talking about to really hammer in the points. Um... Just to say that right there. Um, so yeah, so the plot is not necessarily bad. I think the acting is still pretty good. I think some of the writing could have used some, um, a little bit of help. And some of the filmmaking was a little bit amateur. And the fact that um, some things weren't in the episode that I think should have been in the episode. I think that honestly could have helped. But I don't believe that this episode has any actual... Um, any actual, uh, anything in common with its, uh, original Go Busters, uh, episode that it's adapting. It's adapting part of Mission 3, uh, GT-02 Animal Deployed, where, um, but it's just fight footage, and it's just the, um, the Megazord fight. So, I kind of like what Hasbro is allowing the, uh, team to do in the writer's room and the, uh, and the directors and everything, it allows for, um, while I do believe that the second episode used a bit of fight footage from Go Busters with the Rangers in suit, here, it's entirely new footage, um, the first episode didn't use any fight footage from Go Busters either, but I think we've gotten used to that, where the first episode or two uses, um, no fight footage from the Sentai as a means to set it up, uh, because that happened in Dino Charge, and I think that might have happened in Ninja Steel, but I'm not too sure, um, and, yeah, so, um, it honestly is actually pretty good that they're allowing them to take some liberties, or a lot of liberties, with the Go Buster stuff, so that they can, uh, so that they can, uh, shoot new plots around what was in the original Sentai episodes, and have that. I think they're also going for that, because, uh, Judd Lynn uh, stated back when Dino Charge was airing in an interview that um, they would need to recreate the suits from scratch, I believe, or mend the suits from Japan because time is also a factor in shooting these seasons because within about five years is when the suits from the Sentais usually start breaking down 
in terms of wear and tear, in terms of their shelf life. So, yeah, since Go Busters was 2012 to 2013, you can see the problems that they might have had. But I'm actually really surprised that Hasbro is putting a th is throwing a bit more budget into the season to allow for more extensive footage to be shot. Now I'm willing to bet as the episodes come along that we're gonna see more fight like suit fight footage for the Rangers being used uh, from Go Busters and everything just to balance out the budget because we're getting these early episodes out of the way where. They establish more of the central plot, and they also have more original stuff early on that they can that they can use later for new footage and everything. But I have a feeling they're going to use, uh, they're going to tr probably sneak in some more fight footage from Go Busters as they go on, and I'll note it when the episodes air. But to give this episode a score right now in this video, uh, I'd give it a. 6.5 to a 7 it's really kind of average i don't it's missing a few things that i think are essential to these kind of episodes or plots or whatever else um and i really do wish that this episode were a bit better it's not terrible but it's not great uh so yeah and this is also kind of a roxy focused episode um which or roxy is that her name Zoe, sorry. This is a Zoe-focused episode. Uh, we do get a bit more of uh, an explanation of what she did before being a Power Ranger with uh, Roxy uh, yelling at her that she was um, a, uh, a laundry person, I believe. But obviously she's been, um, she's been promoted to Ranger and everything. So, yeah. Um... But it's really not that bad. So, really not much else to say. Links in the description all my shit. Subscribe if you want. And I'll see you guys for the next episode, Digital Deception. See you then. Hopefully Hasbro doesn't copyright claim this fucking episode review. <laughs>